What's up everyone, I'm Coach Neek, and today we're talking about the hidden dangers of bodybuilding. We're not focusing around cardiovascular health, so we're not looking at blood pressure, we're not looking at dyslipidemia from cholesterol, we're not going to be looking at the organ damage, showing your liver, your kidneys, we're not looking at those things. We're not going to look at prostate enlargement, we're not going to look at the risk of hematology issues. All those things are intensively covered upon YouTube uh, within the academic literature with case studies. It's intensively well reported within anecdotal bodybuilding forums, on online internet closed forums or chat groups, that kind of thing. This information is fairly widely available. Instead, what we're going to be focusing on today will be the mental aspect, the neural degeneration. This issue is exacerbated and compounded over years of abuse. Not over a single year, not over five years, but we're talking about decades of use, your mental health will start to decline. And I'm not talking about mental health in terms of depression or your ability to be happy. Instead, I'm talking about your ability to maintain thoughts, to maintain your memories, to articulate yourself and to remain cognizant. All those things will start to get worse. And we do see this within the older group of bodybuilders, especially those who haven't looked after themselves. And I think we have some pretty interesting case uh, examples. I know they're only anecdote because they're only a small number. However, I do think they are still useful and we can draw some meaning from them. And I will elucidate exactly what I mean. But before we go into that, I wanted to talk about the mechanisms of how the neurodegeneration happens from anabolics. When you take androgens at high levels and you chronically elevate your serum levels, you are causing your body to go into a fight or flight drive. You are increasing your sympathetic drive, not the parasympathetic, but the sympathetic. The sympathetic is responsible for the fight, flight or freeze response we normally get when our bodies are placed in danger. When you go and bungee jumping, when you're sprinting, when you are wrestling with friends, when you're engaging in sexual activities, your sympathetic drive spikes and increases. And when we take testosterone or another anabolic, be it 19-NOR or DHT otherwise derived, you are increasing your sympathetic drive. And we see this play out in men through, a varying, uh, through varying degrees and varying different side effects. Some of these can be included in sleep disturbances, but after all, the body isn't going to want to sleep if it's trying to fight. Another one is increased inflammation. The more your body is put into the fight or flight drive, the lower the body's propensity is to basically detoxifying. Instead, it's trying to increase its drive, its performance to do well and actually escape the danger or deal with the danger. So your ability to detoxify is reduced. So inflammation can show itself in the body through acid reflux. It can show itself through acne. It can show itself through hormonal imbalances in the neurosteroid department. So our ability to regulate our emotions are sometimes affected and impaired. You can sort of see where I'm going with this. The sympathetic drive placed upon our body will decrease our brain's ability and our body's ability to detoxify the brain. And slowly over time, these toxins will build up. The inflammation within the brain will build up. That inflammation can cause something called tau protein misfolding and beta amyloid plaque deposition within the neurons, essentially leading to cell death and the inability for your brain to function as it otherwise would want to. Now, certain anabolics will exacerbate this more than others. For example, trenbolone is much worse than testosterone is for mental health. Now, we have seen this only through rodent studies uh, in a clinical setting, that is. And we can see that beta amyloid deposition within these rodents after trenbolone exposure was exacerbated quite significantly. However, in humans, we can only ever go off living live examples and not once we've had their brains uh, picked apart and looked at for beta amyloid deposition. And I'm not aware of any cadavers being looked at. But we do see it in anecdotal reports all the time. People who take Trembolone have their mental judgment, their mental reasoning impaired. And some people, if they're being honest with themselves, will say they felt dumber on Trembolone. They felt their ability to reason, their ability to understand, their ability to make reasoned and um, intelligent arguments are all impaired and they can't work the way they would do otherwise. And when they come off, 
after the downtime, they realize the issue that was on stake here. And oftentimes they can try and repair their relationships, which they've hurt, or um, just see their decision making from a new light. But just because trembling is bad doesn't make the others good. Everything else, everything else, the poison is within the dose. The more testosterone you take, the more poison it is for your brain. The same goes for Danibol, Decker, Winstrol, Ment, Nangelone, which is basically just Decker, just a shorter acting half-life. All those things will be toxic for your brain when you're taking at high doses because it's going to decrease your parasympathetic drive. Um, sorry, your sympathetic drive and you decrease your body's ability to repair itself. Over time, as these inflammation markers are raised, as this damage accrues, it will slowly start to show itself in your ability to remember, in your ability to hold conversations where you appear to be cognizant and intelligent. I only have to point at examples such as Ronnie Coleman. If you look at, I mean, even Eddie Abu, I know a lot of people are gonna give me hate for Eddie, uh, but I think he's another good case. But I look at Ronnie Coleman. The man does not operate the same as he did when he was younger. And he can't just put that down to age. The man isn't old enough to have the level of mental degeneration that he does have. And Ronnie took a lot of stuff. There's no, there's no, <laughs> there's no getting around that. Ronnie took an awful lot of crap. And you can really see it affecting his current modern day ability to converse. And then if you look at someone like Dorian Yates, same era, massive bodybuilder, took an awful lot of stuff, and yet he's much more articulate. He has the ability to call upon his thoughts, his reasons, and deliver a sensible argument and conversation in a way which makes him feel like he's all there. And the only difference between these two things is that Dorian Yates has explored compounds which improves cell turnover in the brain. It helps the development of new neurons and increase brain health, slows the onset of Alzheimer's and neurodegenerative diseases. I am, of course, talking about 5-HBT2A receptor agonists such as LSD or uh, psilocybin. Those sort of drugs are well shown now within studies to help promote cell growth in the brain and hopefully attenuate the damage caused by androgenic and anabolic steroids. And I do put Dorian Yates' mental health down solely to the use of these drugs. <laughs> Unfortunately, Ronnie Coleman doesn't do those things, and you can see the obvious effect. Now, I know that's n equals 2, and the, the scope of my little study there is incredibly limited. But it does still align with the research and literature that we do have, um, just not on bodybuilders. There are things you can do outside of using psychedelic compounds, though, to keep your brain in check. And by no means am I recommending any bodybuilder to go out there and take hero doses. If you are to experiment and you are to use these things, I would heavily recommend you microdose. You take very low doses and allow the effects to attenuate over time. Okay. The other things you can do, and I'm hoping my audience are still young people, people who are still experimenting and playing with these things and have a lot of wiggle room. The biggest thing you can do right now, the biggest bang for your buck, is maintain your antioxidants. So make sure you're having your vitamin C's, make sure you're having fiber, make sure you are having curcumin, glutathione, L-carnitine, uh, NAC, all these things to help detoxify your body. On top of that, make sure you're maximizing your sleep. If you have to, use things like melatonin. Don't listen to Huberman saying that five milligrams of melatonin is gonna fuck you up. It's not going to. Five milligrams of melatonin is gonna be helpful to you, especially if you use it to biohack your circadian rhythm, get it into a sensible rhythm, and then taking it out again. You can use stuff like magnesium biglycinate to also improve your sleep. And remember that the dose is the poison is is within the dose. The higher you go, the more negative side effects you're going to get. Uh, as of all these videos I've been doing brief uh, recently, it's a very brief overview and a very small snippet of the subject. But if this is something you're interested in and you want to know more about, please comment down below so I can assess the interest with this, that there is within these videos. Because that, at the end of the day, is going to be the thing which I then use to figure out what the audience wants to know and what I can deliver. So again, if you like this video, please consider subscribing, liking and commenting your interest. Uh, I hope that you gain something from this. And until next time, which should be tomorrow, uh, I'll leave that with you and we can go from there. So thank you for watching, everyone. I'll see you tomorrow. And please consider joining my TikTok where I do daily videos about three times a day. Anyway, peace, everyone. We've hit the 10 minute mark.